And then we can ask ourselves with the next lick or the next bite is, is this better than, worse than, or the same as the previous one? And I think of that as we can map out that pleasure plateau. Because as we start to eat the ice cream, it's, oh, it's really good. It's still really good. It's real, still really good. And then it's, it's like, well, it's not as good as the last one. And that's our brain saying, okay, you've had enough. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. And is there a time to pay attention that is crucial? So, for example, there's a, an ice cream shop here in L.A., Jenny's Ice Cream. And before the pandemic, you would go in, they'd give you a, a free taste of anything. And of course, you know, they have eight different flavors that taste amazing. So I get this one, oh, that sounds good. This one sounds good. And all of a sudden I have three scoops of ice cream, right? I went in hoping to have one. And I'm eating the ice cream and it tastes amazing. And then as the day goes on, those three scoops now are really hitting me. The next morning I'm sluggish, I don't feel myself. So where is that attention component key? Because in the moment, I'm, I'm enjoying Jenny's. I'm so happy I'm here. And then it just like tails off until I don't want to get out of bed the next day. Yeah. So you're highlighting two really important pieces. One is that we learn through, you know, reward-based learning is based on feedback. We've got to see, so the closer that feedback can be to the behavior, the easier it is for us to be able to see, oh, there's the result you know, positive prediction or negative prediction, or that was good, do it again, or that wasn't so good, you know, don't do that again. So if you can link back the sluggishness the next day to the ice cream the previous day, it, it gets much easier to remember, oh, wait a minute, last time I had three scoops, that wasn't so good. And so I think of this as, you know, I kind of use the analogy in the book of gears. You know, your first gear gets you moving, that's mapping out these habit loops. The second gear is like asking, what am I getting from this? That changes the reward value. And then the third gear is finding the bigger, better offer. You know, like what's better than this? So let's use the three scoops of ice cream as an example here. So with three scoops of ice cream, you know, you get eight, eight tastes and you're like, okay, I'll have those three or those five or those, you know, whatever. Let's use three because that's a, that's a very common thing. Now, you tell me, AJ, when you have, when you're eating a, a bite of ice cream, are you paying attention to how good that is? Or is your mind already thinking about the next lick or the next bite? Oh, I'm, I'm thinking about that second flavor that's starting to melt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So our Brian, the, the, this process is set up to help us anticipate the future because that's what drives us to do things. So from a survival standpoint, you know, we, we get the reward of something and then that dopamine fires, firing shifts from receiving the reward to anticipating it. So that dopamine starts firing that says, do it again, do it again. That's where craving comes from. So here, feedback can also help us tremendously in the moment. And by this, I think of this as like the pleasure plateau. So we can be asking ourselves, instead of anticipating that next bite or the next lick, we can ask ourselves, well, first we can just pay attention to the food that's actually in our mouth so we can actually enjoy the ice cream that we bought because it tasted good. You know, the <laughs> irony is we're not paying, we're not enjoying it. So we can savor it. And then we can ask ourselves with the next lick or the next bite, is, is this better than, worse than, or the same as the previous one? And I think of that as we can map out that pleasure plateau. Because as we start to eat the ice cream, it's, oh, it's really good, it's still really good, it's real, still really good. And then it's, it's like, well, it's not as good as the last one. And that's our brain saying, okay, you've had enough. So I have my patients or even folks in our, in our Eat Right Now program ask themselves, how little is enough? How much can you enjoy and then stop before overindulging? Why? Because it's better <laughs> when you don't overindulge. It tastes, you get all the pleasure and then you stop before you go off the cliff. And you're also getting the, the immediate reward right then that says, hey, it's better not to overindulge. And so it's even easier to learn that as compared to having to make that connection from the next morning where it's like, oh, what, what was it that I did yesterday? Was it the ice cream? Was it the soda? Was it the three pieces of pizza? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, then we have to try to separate those pieces out.
We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. I love all of that. The, there was a saying that I heard about five years ago that started making me looking at my daily habits and then evaluating what I was getting in return for that investment in that habit. And the saying was, the answer to consciousness is more consciousness. So, so that allowed me to peer into things more so. That's the what you were talking about in this, this second gear. I, that I'm realizing this now, so why is this now? And the second, what that anecdote led me to was the question, what am I getting out of each and one of these? So now that I've recognized that there was a habit that I do, what is the reward? And then understanding that I can put in my own reward. So for instance, I grew up in a family where you ate everything all the time and, and there was no food left on your plate and, and all these things. And as you grow older and you were living more of a world of abundance, well, eating everything became just how I ate and eating to the point of can't eat anymore was a habit that for a lot of people from the, in that position will, will develop. And the reward of wearing certain clothes was a much better feeling for me than the, the feeling of being satisfied in that moment or eating to, I can't eat anymore. And so that was very easy. And then once I saw it in that manner, I started looking at all of my habits. So it was like, well, net, quitting Netflix and binging on shows was easy because I wasn't there was nothing in return. It was only another letdown. What was what was the gain? That I had something in common with other people who watched The Lion King and now we can discuss it? That's not a reward. <laughs> That's fabulous. And maybe the first time watching Lion King is, is good because, you know, the music's good, the animation's good, whatever. I think I was referring to Tiger King. <laughs> I think oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, even the first time's not good on that one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're, you've nailed it. That's what second gear or that second step is all about. What am I getting from this? Our brains know, our bodies know, and they all. what that does, I think of that as it opens up the space for us to find that BBO, that bigger, better offer. And that could be as simple as not getting three scoops of ice cream. It could be as simple as not, you know, eating everything on our plate and saving leftovers for later. It could be as simple as like, you know, watching one episode of a show, if it's a good show, <laughs> you know, and then not like trying to binge on the whole series just because they've left us with a cliffhanger. Well, something else that is important to me there that that I was realizing is if you're able to forego those habits and, re and replace them with things that enhance life, that make you more happier, that allow you to, to thrive, and then the feeling that you get from making those choices and how you feel on a daily basis, because now your day is filled up with things that have a, a, the, a higher return than the bad habits that you are living through, once you reach that, there's no going back because you realize how well life can be, how exciting, how transformative, uh, how exciting to wake up every day when your, your day is filled with habits that enhance every moment. Totally. That's the bigger, better offer. So, you know, if we don't eat three scoops of ice cream, the next morning we wake up feeling refreshed, you know? All of, you know, that is absolutely it. You know, if we, and we can even form good habits this way, where it's like, instead of telling ourselves that we should exercise, you know, y'all have probably heard the joke, we should all over ourselves, right? <laughs> so we, That's a good one. we should exercise, we should eat healthy food. We Instead, we can just pay attention and say, oh, what's it like when I exercise? What's it like when I eat healthy food? What's it like when I have one scoop of ice cream and actually pay attention to every bite and savor it? as compared to eating three scoops mindlessly and then already planning for my next trip then you know tomorrow to the ice cream store because I hadn't really been satisfied from today. Yeah, that's that's what it's all about. And it's amazing how the little things in life can be pretty rewarding when we pay attention.